This episode of the What's Happening Delco podcast is brought to you by Delco Meets for Business. Check us out on Meetup, register, and attend one of our fantastic networking meetings, which we meet on the first and third Thursday at the Brick House in Ridley Park, and the second and fourth Thursday at the Upper Crust in Newtown Square. We look forward to seeing you there. What's happening, Delco? I'm Rich Shane, and welcome to the What's Happening Delco podcast. Today, I'm joined by Grammarita. Grammarita, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me today, Rich. Well, what we're going to talk about, you're gabbing with Grammarita, and I'm fascinated. What is gabbing with Grammarita? Well, so gabbing with Grammarita is basically, um, I'm on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Reels, and Long story short is I go around drinking margarita in local restaurants and I give my opinion. You know, I like to see uh, the appearance, the consistency, the taste, kind of the vibe of the restaurant. And it really took off during the pandemic and I got quite a following and uh, restaurants invite me to their place. It's, It's a lot of fun. How did this all get started for you? I know you said during the pandemic, but how did the idea come about? So I've always liked margaritas and I guess I got picky with it. You know, they have to be frozen. And uh, so I guess I'm a little particular when it comes to my margaritas. So during the pandemic, we were all stuck at home and I was making all sorts of margaritas. And out of just sheer boredom, I would like film them and taste or tell people what I liked about the margaritas. And I would send it to people. And I had young nieces that like they were like 12, 13 and 14. They're like, this is exactly what people do on TikTok. You should go on TikTok and do it. And I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. But at the same time, my granddaughter was born and as my first grandchild, I didn't know what I wanted to be called. I didn't, you know, nanny and granny felt too old. And my son said, you love margaritas and you're going to be a grandmother. Why don't you be called Grammarita? And then I loved the name. And then that same day, I decided to launch Gabbing with Grammarita. And I started like was the first one was a celebration of my granddaughter being born. And I had a Grammarita Margarita. And it started from there. There are so many cocktail options available. What is it for you, though, about the Margarita? So I think Margarita, it's, oh, I guess I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. To me, it's kind of like a lifestyle. Like the second you get a margarita in your hand, um, it's just a feeling. It's just like you're chill. The margarita's refreshing. It sometimes makes me feel like I'm on a tropical beach. It, it's just a, a feeling when I'm drinking a margarita. Now, you're a margarita expert. What are the balances, the ratios? What is a good margarita to you? Grammarita. All right. So it has to be frozen. Um, I feel like if it's not frozen, the only way I can describe it is when people are drinking beer and they get to the bottom of it. I don't know what they call it, but everybody always seems to leave a little bit of uh, beer at the bottom of their drinks. Nobody wants to drink that because it's like old and warm and gross. So when I drink a frozen margarita and when I get to the bottom of it, it's all runny and watery and it's the bottom of it. And who wants that? That's how a regular margarita tastes to me. So that's why I'm very, very picky. It has to be frozen. It has to have a lot of frozen ice in it, but it really comes down to the taste of the tequila. So I try a lot of different kinds of tequila brands. Um, and then the, if you're going to go quick and just get a regular margarita mix, um, is there enough sour mix in there? So yes, there is a kind of a science for it to me. Now, I do try a lot of different flavors of margaritas. And honestly, there's very few that I don't like. And there's very few that don't get a high score. In fact, people always tell me I give too high a scores, but it's because I just love margaritas. What about the rim? Is it salt? Is it sugar? Is it spice? Is it nothing? How do you like your rim to be accentuated? All of the above. Okay. As long as it, it makes that appearance look beautiful, probably preference is salt. I love salt, but I also like a good sugar rim. I love it when sometimes they make it colorful, like, you know, St. Patty's Day and they'll give you a green rim or uh, Valentine's Day, they give you a red rim. Anything that gives a little bit of pop. And um, 
sometimes when you're at a real authentic Mexican restaurant, they'll give you like a candy coated spicy topping. And that's always a lot of fun too. Yes, it's all about um, just that appearance and the experience of the margarita. All right, we come to Grammarita's house and you mentioned the quality of the tequila. If you're making us a margarita, what is the tequila of choice that you're going to grab from your bar to make us that perfect margarita? Well, the thing is, I like a lot of tequilas, but I would say uh, Patron. I absolutely love Patron. That's probably my go-to. But I do like, I kind of stick with the Jimmy Buffett brand too, and I'll go with uh, the Margaritaville Silver. So it's got to be silver. Um, I also do like a good lime tequila. So uh, Patron sells a lime. Um, Absolute sells a good lime, but I'm sorry, that's a that's a vodka. Sometimes I veer off, but uh, yes, you know what? I it's, like Jimmy Buffett would take an exit here and there to explore and have an adventure. So adding a little bit of Absolute to your margarita, there's nothing wrong with that. I know, because sometimes when people come to um, Grand Margarita's house. They're not necessarily margarita drinkers, but so I'll make them a strawberry daiquiri. Um, you know, I think tequila is one of those things you either love it or you hate it. And in fact, my husband hates tequila and my husband doesn't even like margaritas. But I think that's why it works, because I can have all the margaritas I want. And he usually drives me to the places and uh, or there's never a lack for girlfriends to go out and have margaritas with. So I know you mentioned silver. Um do you have a preference to Blanco, Añejo, Reposado? Are there are you know different variations that you look for as well? Actually, so I'm pretty plain Jane when it comes to the. So sometimes it's the tequila can really change the taste of the margarita. So that's why I like the silver. So I do stick with silver or the lime because that kind of enhances the margarita. And then it's all about kind of the margarita mix, or if I'm making it homemade, or when I'm out, uh, what kind of tequila are they using? And um, what is their mix like? And honestly, in a perfect world, I love it when they have a frozen margarita machine because I know it's going to be consistent. Like, And I know I sound like I'm a big Margaritaville fan, and I am. That's kind of what set the bar for my drinks. Um, you can go to any Margaritaville anywhere in the country or outside of the country, and you're going to get that same margarita. Um, and same Thing with a couple other places like Del Pez that just opened in Glen Mills. They had one in Wilmington. They still have one in Wilmington. You're going to get that same exact margarita. So it's not necessarily up to the bartender. It's the way their actual recipe is because bartenders get a little crazy and they think because I'm there to taste their margarita, they're like, and I put an extra shot of tequila in there for you. And I'm not there. It's going to sound crazy. Like I'm not there to get drunk. I'm really there to taste the actual margarita. So when they put the extra tequila in there, it changes the whole, now it's too strong. So sometimes that's what I say when I'm rating them. You know, they, they thought they did me a favor and now I don't like it as much. I wish I just had their regular recipe. So I'm really the magic, picky. The magic of a good margarita is the balance. And exactly. not one instrument playing out of tune or playing too high or too low, it's balance, right? 100%. You know a good margarita, it sounds like. What is the future? I mean, you mentioned, hey, you're on TikTok and you're doing all these things and you've you've been, uh, as I say, a lot of businesses, a lot of things that people are doing. You're, you're a COVID baby in a way. What's the future of gabbing with Grammarita? Well, I don't think she's going to go away anytime soon. Uh, I'm probably about 10 years away from retirement, but I'd love to focus on it full time in retirement. And uh, I know like TikTok and a lot of the social media, they become influencers and get paid. I'm not doing it for that uh, right now, but it would be fun in the future if it became a source of income. Right now, I, I look at it like a hobby. And like, for instance, when Del Pez opened, um, I was invited to their soft opening and then the grand opening. And it was just so fun to be a part of all that. And that door was opened because of being gabbing with Grandma Rita. So uh, the future holds just uh, having more time to do this. Uh, I do drink my fair share of margaritas, but you know, work gets in the way and I can't do it every single day. So, I mean, you never know. In the next couple of years, you could be gabbing with Bloody Mary Rita, and then you could do some different things. Who knows? There's a lot of spin, but it sounds like 
for what you're doing, you enjoy it. It's fun. And that's really what that whole spirit is all about, right? Yes. And uh, one thing I'll just expand on that. Um, a lot of times I'll have guests when I'm doing my Gabbing with Grandma Rita episode. And sometimes they'll say, no, I want you to try this. Like, you know, um, mornings with margaritas or no, mornings with mimosas. And uh, so then I'll try what it is that they really like. And I do try to keep an open mind. Um, it's not that I hate other drinks. I just enjoy margaritas more. So I like that idea of that maybe it could be uh, Bloody Marys in the future. And, uh, <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> exactly. It really is. It's a lot of fun. All right. You're out and about in Delco and you need a cheesesteak option before you grab your margarita. Where do you and your family go for cheesesteaks? Delco Steaks right down there uh, by McDay Boulevard in Ridley. Love it. All time favorite. All right. How about a pizza option? Where do you and your family go to grab pizza? Thunderbird Pizza. Love their pickle pizza. I love their extra cheese pizza. Um, I do got to say Slacks as well. I love their buffalo chicken pizza at Slacks. All right. You're out of limes. You need to go out and get some limes. But before that, you need a convenience store option. Where are you going? Royal Farms or Wawa? Wawa. All day. Love Wawa. Grandma Rita, how do you describe Delco to somebody who's never been here or has never heard of Delco before? It's it's a way of being. It's 100% a culture. Um, I'm born and raised in true Delco through and through. Got my Delco pride. And for people that are outside of Delco, I don't think they get it. Like, and I've had a couple of friends that moved here and they're like, wow, we did not understand the culture of Delco until we moved here. Yes, um, but it's fun. Okay, this is gonna be a little spin on what I normally ask. You have friends or family coming in from out of town and you wanna take them to get a really great margarita in Delco. Where are you taking them or where are you sending them? Well, we need a lot more margarita places, uh, but I would say 100% El Grand Rodeo, which is right there in Glen Mills, uh, one of my favorite margarita places. Um, now, Del Pez just opened March 1st. That's kind of right around the corner from there, but that's a fabulous one. Uh, La Catrina's in media is really good. And guess what? I think Applebee's has a darn good margarita. It's tried. It's true. It's always exactly what you're going to get when you go to Applebee's. And um, that's a five-line review. And my reviews go up to five. Um, and Chili's, they have a good margarita. Now that I'm saying that, there's a lot of places they could go. <laughs> it's going to be the margarita tour with Grandma Rita. And that sounds like a lot of fun. Let me ask you, as you look on social media, as you do your research, are there places maybe outside of Delco, outside of Pennsylvania, either A, you've been, or B, that you look and say, you know what, I want to get there for their margarita? Uh, yes. So my mission is to hit all of the Margaritavilles. So when I go on vacation, I go and stay at Margaritaville. So, and they're always in cool touristy locations. Um, and actually, just to go back to your retirement question, like what does the future hold? Someday I would love to retire in, in Margaritaville. They have uh, retirement homes. That would be so fun. But my worry is then I'd end up in rehab and wouldn't be really <laughs> able to enjoy it too much. Um, but yes, a lot of times I specifically will go somewhere because I know there's a good margarita place there. Um, so let's see if I can think of some of them. I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to try that place and we're going to go have that great margarita. Um, and luckily I do travel for work. Now, after work hours, I'm like, okay, where's a really good margarita place? So I can kind of do a two for one. You know, I'm in a new city in a new town and um, taste what their best margarita might be. Awesome. Is there anything we haven't talked about? Anything you want the listeners to know more about you or gabbing with Grandma Rita? Uh, I would just say I never thought in a million years that I would be on social media talking about margaritas and having so much fun doing it. It's just silly and it's enjoyable, but people really love it. And it's such a great conversation starter. So if there's something they've been thinking about doing, just go ahead and do it and try it. Like I never did a podcast before, and this has been a great experience getting to know you and uh, 
just this whole thing's been great. So people should just kind of get outside of their comfort zone, try something new, and they might love it even more. In the fabric of Delco, this is what makes living here so interesting. Because when you walk around and you're going in and out, in and out of that Wawa holding the door for each other, you just passed Grandma Rita. And you never know the stories, the passions, the hobbies, what people are doing that stand out in this community. Grandma Rita, thank you so much for being a guest of What's Happening Delco. And we really can't wait to see you out and about giving those ratings, giving those limes, and uh, seeing what the next hottest and best margarita is in Delco. Well, and I'm going to be looking at what's happening in Delco to see where to go next for my next margarita review. Thanks so much for having me on today. It was great to get to meet you. Fabulous. Thank you. Cheers. Or <laughs> Cheers. See you, Rick. Thank margarita. you. Margarita. <laughs> margaritas for all. All right. Bye now. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Hey, it's Rich. Thank you so much for being a listener to the What's Happening Delco podcast. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to learn more about the people and businesses in our community. I have been a real estate agent for over 25 years working with first-time home buyers to last-time home sellers. As a listener of the podcast, my gift to you is a complimentary one-year American Home Shield home warranty. This is for buyers and sellers that I help. If you're looking to move anywhere in the United States, I have you covered with an amazing network of real estate agents. I look forward to hearing from you. My direct line is 215-313-3777, or you can email me at rshaneremax at comcast.net. Oh, by the way, I am never too busy for any of your referrals.